know, like, at the point and at no point was it like, oh, we're going to be together. And said, okay, our, our focus now is 100% marketing. That's our job. And everyone is, if you're not doing marketing, then you're, you know, you're not doing the job. Like, that would be a strategic reason. That would be Instead, it was just suddenly like, doing yeah. a good job. Um, and so, yeah. you know, and then I think the worst yeah. part is if that sort of thing starts to take over. Right? You know, if, if it feels like, okay, the office is like not even on site. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We're not in line. for like the next three months and I'm on my way to Montana and then I'm going to see how Montana treats me. And, and, but like knowing how like, on the market, I don't want to make a permanent decision about where I am. So it's like, Austin's nice. <laughs> Enjoyed every you know, every time I've been there. Um, I get my time there. So, uh, you know, I'm sure this is all your first time. Sorry. It was for a while, man. You know, I mean, like my first two years there, I did like investment for me, you know, like some stuff that I'm most proud of. But, you know, like we opened this, we opened a, you know, last time And it was just like, it just made it really so much. You know, it, it just, and it was like, it was clear that the group for me put so much of herself into it. Kelly Chapel and the museum generally have become basically a band new project. You know, and it, it, and it was just, it was hard to watch because it was like, I just felt there was so much cost in that organization. I mean, that was what I signed on for. I, mean, I didn't sign on for what it was, but really, where it was. Sorry, folks. Sorry, no, sorry. No, sorry. Yeah. I don't know. See if I can find a deal in the Yeah. I think I'm going to. Yeah. How does that happen? I actually have some complaints about that. I'm wondering how I can channel them too. Because when I launch it in Android, I can't. It, like it ignores my auto rotates, and it only launches in portrait mode. That's weird. Um, so Wednesday. Can I just get it in the app store? Yeah. Right. I got, yeah. Well, I don't know if I got it in the app store. If I clicked on a link, I think I might have gotten it in the app store. Um, it always takes me to the tutorial. 
first day is uh, yeah, version two getting it right. Hacking history, eighth adventure of Franklin, cultivating global competency, digital access, planonomics, inside the panic room. Jesus, just doing that one. <laughs> uh, publishing linked data, linked open data. Yeah. Why is it asking me? I want to know what that means before I press a button that says that. <laughs> yeah, is that Android or iOS? iOS. Oh, see, so you get nice. You get. I'm, I'm, I'm compelled in the landscape. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, claim. Yeah, I think they're going to version two where. Um, I'm from the Midwest. Man, I'm going to give you my card. Yeah, that's um, the one thing I didn't bring with me. Well, and then I can write mine. All right, so thanks for coming today. I know it's a tough uh, time slot after lunch. You're feeling a little tired, so I promise I'll keep it lively. we got a lot of interesting things to show you today. My name is Andrew Lee. I'm with Wikimedia District of Columbia, and I have been doing Wikipedia work with LAM organizations for more than a decade. And we thought that this would be a kind of a nice introduction to Wikidata, which some of you might have heard of before, but maybe not. How many people here have worked with Wikidata in some way before? Some of you, but not many. This is great. So this is hopefully going to be very useful to you as we try to tell you about what types of new things are going on in the Wikiverse. Um, my name is, again, Andrew Lee. I've written a book about Wikipedia. There's also a new book about leveraging Wikipedia, primarily geared towards libraries, but it's also for the whole glam sector. And we do a lot of things here, uh, well, in DC with the Smithsonian Library of Congress and other folks. Uh, if you didn't know, you know the uh, US National Archives actually has a federal employee who's a full-time Wikimedian in residence at NARA. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit later about a project that we're doing with the Smithsonian. So just a very quick timeline of land engagements with Wikipedia. You may or may not know that in 2010, there was the first Wikimedian in residence with the British Museum in London, and from there things took off quite uh, quickly. There has been some collaboration between Europeana and some of these other consortia with the wiki community, and in 2017 now we're doing a lot of work with Wikidata, and I'll explain a little bit why this is becoming so popular right now. So if I were to summarize Wikidata in one sentence, this would be the, the quick um, 10,000 foot view, that Wikidata is the evolution of Wikipedia, but not just Wikipedia, but any kind of linked open data set into the ultimate free linked open database. So what does this actually look like in, in reality? Well, we're going to step over all these different things in this Wikidata in one page. So there's a lot of things to understand about Wikidata, but I try to boil it down into one page. So if you have a hand out there, what you see on the screen should be what you have in your hand there. This is a two-sided sheet there. And what we'll be going over is most of the basics of Wikidata, but all the tools that I think are relevant to GLAM organizations going forward. And if you are a QR code lover, you can actually snap the QR code here and bring it up. And the nice thing about the electronic PDF is that every single link in that PDF file is live. So you actually have this kind of master sheet to jump off to all the crucial tools you need to know in the Wikidata universe. And it's also available in 10 languages now. So um, we found this to be quite useful. So 2017 was kind of a big turning point for Wikidata. If you didn't know it, and if you think you haven't used Wikidata, you actually have indirectly. So Google's knowledge graph, whenever you do a search, uses Wikidata intensely. It actually has a copy of Wikidata's content and uses it in search results. Um, if you've ever used a digital system like Siri or Alexa, they also use Wikidata's content for their answers. Um, and we now have a new project called Structured Data on Commons, trying to bring structured metadata to the multimedia repository that is there, that accompanying Wikipedia. So Wikidata is quickly emerging to become a hub of future uh, Wikimedia projects, but also a popular hub in the general sense for scholarly content on the web. So we'll go over some of the basics of why Wikidata, the design of it, and what kinds of things you can do with it, queries and tools, and some basic case studies of how uh, we've used Wikidata. So you probably know something about Wikipedia already. It has more than 5.7 million English language articles. This is 10 times bigger than any encyclopedia that previously existed in English. So you think it's pretty big. It's a top 10 website in the entire world. And it has a pretty high reputation now. And we would actually work with a lot of cultural partnerships. This was a piece that made a lot of headlines recently. So how many people have seen this, that the Tate is going to outsource, and I think that word outsource, but 
tap, I would say, Wikipedia um, content for some of its biographies. So this met some, some debate in the glam community about whether this is a good or, or bad decision. Um, but also, Wikipedia is being used by Facebook and YouTube as well in this era of fake news or unreliable news. They have actually leaned on Wikipedia as a guide for their users to try to de decide whether videos or content is true or not. So it's quite astonishing, these turn of events, that in 2001, Wikipedia was seen as fast, loose, and reliable, and now you see multi-billion dollar corporations leaning on Wikipedia's content for their users. So quite a change of, uh, of fate here. So even though Wikipedia English has 5.7 million articles, there are 30 million articles across 300 languages. So even if we think Wikipedia English is pretty good, there's a lot of information and knowledge that's not in English Wikipedia. So there's a lot of inconsistency and gaps in the knowledge of what we have in Wikipedia. And the challenge was how do you consolidate all these knowable facts in one place? So that we have a lesson to be learned from a previous experience where before 2004, we had all these images scattered across all different language editions of Wikipedia. So if you uploaded a picture of Barack Obama to one encyclopedia, it didn't necessarily get reflected in French or Spanish or German. So Wikimedia Commons was created to provide a central repository for multimedia content. So many of you probably work with Wikimedia Commons or have seen those things come up in search results. So similarly, Wikidata was made to consolidate knowable facts regardless of language. Right? Its mission was to convert encyclopedic lexical content into structured statements that could be stored in a database. And it was meant to try to turn human readable into machine understandable. And a lot of neat things can happen when this occurs. And another great useful thing that's relevant to GLAMS is that each of these database records can also link to its partner record in a GLAM institution or collection or an external linked open database. So this is kind of the, the dream of a semantic web realized. So here's a good example of what we would see in a typical English Wikipedia article. Right, so we see here that the United States Congress is a bicameral legislature of the federal government of the United States. It meets in the Capitol. There are its geo-coordinates in the upper right-hand corner. So if you've ever seen a Wikipedia article, this kind of looks familiar, but this is all just text written by volunteers. It actually isn't in any real, easily searchable form. Right? If you do a search, it would just be a pure text search. If you look at the bottom of this article, you will see some other cool metadata, but again, this is all just written text. It's not really structured in any way. You can find out who are the members and leaders of significance in the Congress, and what committees there are, and what caucuses they are. Again, just free form typed on a page, not in any database searchable way. So Wikidata comes into the picture, and in 2012, it now provides the power of searching and querying in a structured way so Wikipedia always bragged about itself as the sum of all human knowledge. And with Wikidata, it's no longer just the you know, big lump sum of human knowledge. It's actually a modular interconnected mesh of human knowledge. So how does this actually work? So it is basically storing all its facts as three-part statements in Wikidata. So if anyone here has ever heard of RDF or uh, triple store, these are all very techie terms that probably until Wikidata came around, you're like, I don't understand this RDF database stuff. So Wikidata has finally made a lot of this more accessible to folks. And it's basically the idea that any kind of factual information can be stored as a subject, predicate, and an object. Or in a more basic way, it's an item that has a property, and here's its value. Or much more simply, it's thing has a relationship to something else. So just think of the database as full of these statements that are three parts. So for example, if you were to take that prose in the English language Wikipedia article and turn it into three-part statements, this is what it might look like, right? The United States Congress is an instance of a bicameral legislature, or the United States Congress is in the country of the United States, and you break what you see as written text into these multiple three-part statements, and that's pretty much the fundamentals of Wikidata right there. So instead of using English or Spanish or German or French as the basis of items in Wikidata, we have unique identifiers called Q numbers in Wikidata. And each of these Q numbers should have labels, descriptions, aliases, things that we can digest as human beings. Right. So here's an example of the Wikidata entry for United States Congress. So it is Q11268. That is its unique key or identifier in Wikidata. And we put meaning on top of that by putting English language labels, English language descriptions or English language aliases on top of it. 
right? So you can see that this is the primary label that we have. That is the description. And then we actually have some nicknames or aliases for the US Congress so that it's more easily found, right? So that's just your basic structure of any item that you find in Wikidata. Okay, so this would be boring if you just sat here looking at me the whole time. So we're gonna do some hands-on. So go to your mobile phone or your laptop and let's bring up a Wikidata item and take a look at it, right? So you can either snap this QR code if you have an iPhone or if you're an Android user, you can use Google Lens or Google Assistant or just go to wikidata.org. That's my favorite way to go is just go into your web browser on your mobile phone. And if you've never looked at Wikidata before, you're about to do your first Wikidata item browse. Okay, so when you go to wikidata.org, hopefully you will see something that looks friendly on your mobile. It's looks something like this, welcome to Wikidata, like that, and you can scroll around and see some of the welcome messages. But we're gonna go to the top here and just click on the magnifying glass icon, and we can go ahead and start to type any term that you want. And because Wikidata is a controlled vocabulary, as you type things, it will surface items, right? So go ahead and type in United States, and then C-O-N-G, and see what comes up. Even before you type in all of Congress, hopefully you will see United States Congress with the Eagle Seal pop up, right? So if you've ever used search on Wikipedia, you know that it's horrible, right? You can never find anything in Wikipedia, you can go to Google. But Wikidata is much better. So Google, Wikidata has a controlled vocabulary, people have curated it, they check out all the terms, it's spelled correctly, everything is well done uh, in general Wikidata. So go ahead and select United States Congress and hopefully you'll see something that looks like, oops, I have to go to my internet. I think someone is hijacking my internet there. And you should see United States Congress Q11268. And then just hold on and scroll down. You will see the statements that make up US Congress. You should see instance of bicameral legislature, part of the federal government, uh, country United States, and as you scroll down, you will see all kinds of detail, including, you know, has part United States House of Representatives, United States Senate. Does everyone see that? So hopefully you see some of the details of that Wikidata item. So you'll see that this is the structured part of the structured data. Then if you go far enough, so this is an example of what it looks like, hopefully on your screen, but in a mobile form, right? But then go down until you see the section called identifiers right there. This is where a lot of the Interesting stuff happens for libraries, museums, and archives. So these are simply pointers to external databases and external identifiers. This is a really valuable function of Wikidata, that it is a meta database, it's a database of databases. So if you scroll down, you can see that you've got VF, you've got Freebase, you've got all these different things, Library of Congress, and these are the identifiers in other databases that match the United States Congress. So this can be very valuable as you start to look across different databases to find out, you know, what does this institution call it or how, what kind of information does this institution have for US Congress. Okay, so those are two different sections of these item. The statements and then the identifiers, which are special uh, pointers to other databases. Okay, so you can go ahead and type in anything that you want in there and just kind of look up your favorite things to see how complete or not complete they are in Wikidata. Okay, so that's your first experience with Wikidata, and it's pretty easy once you know what to look for, right? So you'll see the instance of bicameral legislature, part of, and country right there. Now, what else can you see here? Well, there are three parts of the statement. So the first part, as we said, is the Q number. Q numbers can be created by anyone. They roughly map to a Wikipedia article, but you can actually have more Q numbers than Wikipedia articles. Right, so you might have a Q number for Johann Sebastian Bach, but you might have a Q number for his like fifth child or sixth child or seventh child that weren't very famous but are still notable to be mentioned. So Q numbers can be anything that you want, but hopefully they're not duplicated anywhere. So for example, the Q number one is the universe, kind of makes sense, I guess. Q two is Earth, Q five is human, so they're kind of made in the order of interest. Strangely enough, Q146 is cat, it comes before animal, so somehow in the Wikidata universe, cats were more interesting than all of the animals combined. Um, Q571 is book, Q7075 is library, and for some reason museums are much further down the line than libraries, grr. Um, 33506 is the Q number for museums. 
So again, these are the unique identifiers for each of these nouns or items in Wikidata. And then the properties are much more tightly controlled in Wikidata. Right? You, this relationship should be carefully thought of, established, and curated. So what we have for P numbers or properties or relationships are things that are proposed, discussed, and then finally approved. So these are things like instance of, or the date of birth of someone, or the coordinate location, the longitude and latitude of something. Right? So you want these to be tightly controlled so you know what you're looking for. So there are roughly four to 5,000 properties in Wikidata right now. There are more than 50 million items in Wikidata, but only about four to 5,000 properties that show you the relationships between different things there. So just remember the Q and P numbers that exist in Wikidata. Okay, so here's an example of what the George Washington page looks like. And any number of statements can be created off of a Wikidata item. And here's just an example of three different statements you might find in the wiki uh, data item for George Washington, right? So George Washington Q23 is an instance of P31 human. Now you're probably saying, well, this sounds completely obvious, but you'd be surprised that you do want to know whether someone is a human in Wikidata. Because are you searching for fictional characters or non-fiction people, right? So this is a very important distinction to have, that someone is a human, it's not an imaginary character. Uh, George Washington place of burial is Mount Vernon, and Mount Vernon is a Q number, we know exactly where that is. And then you might have something like George Washington's Library of Congress off ID is this string of numbers, right, that points to the Library of Congress uh, database up there. But what's cool about this is that the database knows this relationship of George Washington instance of human as this Q23, P31, Q5. You can put any number of languages on top of this. So in fact, if you go there and inspect George Washington, all these languages, that's what you'll see. If you see the translation of instance of, you'll see that in uh, Malaysian, Spanish, German, Chinese. So you can see that right off the bat, Wikidata is multilingual because it models relationships and the meaning of stuff, and then we put the languages on top to give it that readability in those different languages. All right, so a quick sidebar. This is really interesting because Wikidata was really useful recently. How many people here heard of the Museum National Fire in Brazil? And if you were like cringing and like melting in, in your seat, you probably remember this. It was just such a heartbreaking thing. It's the most significant museum that Brazil has. We're trying to make the best of it, or at least the Wikipedia community has been trying to make the best of it, so that there has been a community of Wikimedia editors in Brazil trying to work with the museum to recreate digitally whatever it can, because the collections management of this museum was not great. And their digital online collection, one of their servers was in the basement of that museum that burned. Yikes. Yeah. So we had a presentation just the other week. Um, what can we do when a museum burns down? I'm just providing that link if you want to go through the whole presentation. But I just want to show you one slide from that, which is that I and a whole bunch of other folks who knew no Portuguese could help these folks out with cataloging and sorting the artifacts that they were putting in there because it was all Wikidata. So they would put in the images and the names and the collections there, and we could help them categorize things because we could look at the stuff in English. They inserted it in Portuguese, but because Wikidata is language neutral, we could actually work with the semantic content without needing to know Portuguese. So this is an example of a tool called Tabernacle where we can look at Wikidata like this and help move around and organize the collection without needing to know Portuguese, which is pretty cool. Um, so some basic numbers here. So with this effort to call the public in Brazil to upload pictures that they had in their cell phones or maybe something they took a picture of three years ago because the museum didn't have a better picture of these artifacts. So they got you know, more than 3,000 images to be uploaded from the public. Um, more than 400 new Wikidata items were created with public uh, collaboration. And they're still working on more now, but it's, uh, it's interesting to see how Wikidata played a role in them trying to recreate what was lost in that museum fire in Brazil. All right, so how do you get to Wikidata from Wikipedia? Now, if you didn't know, it's right down here. It was hidden in plain sight the whole time. Anyone who does eye tracking surveys knows that this is like the least likely place you would ever look to click on something. So that's where it is. If you click on Wikidata, you will get to the item here. Okay, so United States Congress is an instance of a bicameral legislature, but underlying is this, the Q numbers and the P numbers representing that content. So what kind of neat things can happen? Not only is it language neutral, but if we know what a bicameral legislature is, then all kinds of cool things can happen, right? So if you model a bicameral legislature in Wikidata as being a subclass of 
a legislature, and that legislature is a subclass of um, an assembly, an organization, and so on and so on. You now have a nice ontological model of what things are, so these are more discoverable and more searchable once you know these relationships, right? And this is also the power of a semantic web database. So for folks who are used to dealing with traditional databases, you're probably used to seeing things like this, right? Tables that need to be planned out very carefully, that you need to have meetings on how to have the schema mapped out, right? Um, and these are great, and they served us well for many, many years, um, and ch but changes can be complex, right? If you want to add a column, you want to add a new index, it can be quite taxing on a database system to do these things. Um, and searches involving relationships, if you're searching across tables in a relational database, these join operations can be very, very um, slow. So this is what a traditional database looks like you're probably used to seeing in a spreadsheet or a Microsoft Access or even a traditional content management system. But if you look at what Wikidata and these new RDF databases look like, it looks much more like this, which is a little bit more free form, right? So this is what we would call kind of a graph database. And basically, the, the concept here is that relationships are first class in a graph or RDF database. It's no longer just rows and columns. You need to infer relationships. The relationships are part of the database, right? So for example, here, Edward Hopper uh, is the creator of Nighthawks. Nighthawks is an instance of painting. Painting is a subclass of creative work. And basically, the database is organized around these connections and relationships. So the benefits of this are that these RDF triples make for a very flexible and fast way to create a database. Right? You don't need to have everything figured out at the start. You can be bold. And really, it's the only way that you could build a database with a wiki community, right? Folks who just want to try things out first and figure out everything later. So the cool thing is that multiple parallel ontologies can exist, but I can model paintings this way, Sarah can model paintings that way, the National Gallery of Art can model paintings that way, and hopefully we'll get them together, but the nice thing is Sarah's way of doing paintings doesn't stop me from doing my way of doing paintings. So the downsides of this are that the these, these schema on the fly, or like no schema, can be really confusing for people who want to participate. back in there. So these systems that have no schema means how do you how does the next person who comes into the database participate in the project? Right? So these schemaless systems mean that you need to inspect things, uh, find out what the norms are, but this can often be hard. And the same reason why it's an upside means it's a downside, that these multiple parallel ways of modeling things can coexist, but they may never be resolved long term. Right. But for now, it's a really interesting uh, environment that we have in Wikidata that we have multiple ways of modeling things and trying to converge them every single day. Okay. Another benefit of Wikidata is the use of synonyms, right, or aliases. So one of the more famous examples that we have is Mor Mark Gaddafi. Anyone who's ever watched the spelling of his name over the years knows it's kind of a weird guessing game. So how many aliases do we have for him in English Wikipedia? We have a lot of aliases. <laughs> So the cool thing is, anyone who, like, I come from the journalism world, if you've ever done a LexisNexis search on Muammar Gaddafi, good luck finding every instance of his name. But with a semantic web database, no problem, because it just knows Muammar Gaddafi as Q19878, and we just have different ways of um, Latinizing his, his name there. Right? So the great thing about a database like this is that you can have different writing systems, you can have different phonetization, you can have different spelling variations like this, you can even like not even bother with married and maiden names, right? Someone gets married, that's okay, their Q number's the same. They're the same person, you just have a different label on top of that. So right now, Wikidata has about 52 million items. Simple searches uh, against this database take less than a second. <clears throat> that's pretty amazing if you think about it. 52 million items, simple searches, less than one second. And then complex queries are supported by open standards like Sparkle. How many people here have ever done a Sparkle query before? Cool, not that many. Perfect. We don't need to know any Sparkle to, in, to appreciate this. So here's a very simple example of how Sparkle, which is the querying language that we're using these days, works. If you've ever used a query language like SQL, it's superficially like SQL, but you're better off forgetting everything you know about queries and just learning Sparkle, because it's easier to do it from a clean slate. So this is an example of you asking Wikidata through Sparkle Show me all bicameral legislatures. And the way you do it is you basically put question mark legislature, which is your variable that you put in there. And you say, I want whatever legislature you can find, 
that is an instance of, and that's WDTP31, remember we said property, and then the Q number for bicameral legislature is Q189445. So you basically just set the pattern and you leave the first one as a variable and you ask if you data to fill in that variable. And what does it bring back? It brings back something like that. And if you do this query, it takes about 968 milliseconds to return 148 results. So that's pretty impressive. It means it searches through all those items in less than a second and brings back these different types of bicameral legislatures, some of them in the US, some of them outside um, the United States. Just an example of how that works. All right, so let's take a look at how you edit a Wikidata item. So go to your browser again and go to wikidata.org. Or you can scan that QR code. All right. And what I want you to do is try searching for the most local name of where you live or where you grew up. So not New York City, but down in the neighborhood of like Greenwich Village or the township or the, the hamlet that you live in. See if Wikidata has it. It's always interesting to see what Wikidata might or might not have about as local as you can mm -hmm. find for where you live. All right, so as you type it, you should see it fill in. And hopefully, if it's, if it's something that is unique, it'll come up obviously, but sometimes it won't. It will come up with only a name and then try clicking on it to see if it comes up correctly with the right location. So what do people find when you typed in your, your name? You might see a picture of it next to it. You might see um, that it might have something like Smithville, comma, Missouri, but normally it just has Smithville. Um, did it come up with something meaningful? Yes, no. So for mine, I'm looking up something at like Colesville, New York, and it says instance town in the United States, inception 1821, so it has the date where it's founded, um, Broome County, coordinate location, population, um, and a lot of this is just taken from census records, things like that. So anyone find something unusual when you search for your local? Okay. Did anyone not find it? I had to choose. You had to choose one, okay. But most of the times we ask people to search for a local place and it has it down to the hamlet or town level, right? Which is pretty impressive. Even though Wikipedia may not have an article about that particular town or neighborhood, Wikidata has been uploaded to through many census and geographical databases so that pretty much every significant administrative entity in the United States at least has an entry in Wikidata, which is pretty interesting. Okay, so you can actually go in and edit. So there's a pencil icon there. So if you see something you can approve, you can go ahead and hit the pencil icon and edit it without even having to log in. So this is part of a wiki ethos so that you don't have to create an account or prove anything about yourself to help contribute to the project. So it will record your IP address, which is from this hotel, as the person editing it, but that's part of the uh, anonymous editing uh, system that we have in Wikipedia. Okay. All right, so it's a little bit confusing at times because if you are in the mobile interface, it's fairly obvious where to hit edit. If you look at it in a desktop or laptop computer, you'll see lots and lots of these buttons, these, a lot of edit buttons, a lot of add buttons. And that's just because it wants to give you context for where to add them. So if I go back here, I can show you what it looks like in a interface here. So you'll see the entry on the United States Congress. You see lots of edit buttons everywhere because it tries to give you a place to act on the edit near where you want to do it. So just be aware that there's no master edit button. There's all these little ones down there. Okay. Yes. Oh, question? No. Okay. All right, so as we said before, one of the main benefits of Wikipedia, uh, I'm sorry, Wikidata, is the links to external databases. So here's an example of VF linking not only to all the major libraries around the world, but also now links to Wikidata. So Wikidata is seen as a legitimate external site in the eyes of OCLC and VF, so that it's right here in this connectivity graph. But what's cool is that you can see here from Barack Obama, you have all these identifiers, maybe 30 or so, but if you look at Wikipedia, it actually has a lot more. So not only does it have traditional identifiers pointing to libraries and museums and places like that, it also has pointers that point to the Twitter username of Barack Obama or the ID or topic on Quora.com or other services out there. 
So if you look out there, Barack Obama has more than 83 identifiers. That's hard to find another site out there that has more identifiers than Wikidata in terms of providing a master database uh, linkage to other databases out there. So here's some examples of the identifiers you will typically see in a Wikidata item. As you can see, a lot of traditional databases from national libraries to national museums, but also things like Music Grains or Quora.com or IMDB, so ones that don't typically fit into the regular box of library or national library. Here's some examples we did with the uh, Smithsonian recently. These are the IDs related to the Smithsonian. So Cooper Hewitt, Smithsonian American Art Museum, Smithsonian Trinomial, and then Volcan Volcano ID, which is kind of interesting. So Smithsonian has a Volcano ID that is widely used. For libraries, these are typical properties that you're probably used to seeing up there too. So we have a lot of linkages out to other databases up there. Okay, so right now, Wikidata not only has linkages to these uh, external data sets by pointing to them, you can actually do a search across 44 different databases in one shot. So in the semantic web parlance, this is what we call federated search. You could actually say, show me all instances of bicameral legislatures from Wikidata, but correlated with what I know in Library of Congress, correlated with this other database, and you have now linkages to more than 44 different databases out there. So that's pretty neat that you can do that. If you want to see all the endpoints, you can actually click on that to take a look at that. Um, I'm going to skip this real quick because we're running out of time here. Um, one of the things that is really great about Wikidata is that you can, in fact, check on a lot of values, unlike when you edit Wikipedia, it's just text on the page. For example, here you can check to say, if you enter in an ISBN prefix for an item, Wikidata can check and say, oh, by the way, you haven't said that this entity is an instance of a publisher. So if you want to add this to an item, like Smithsonian or Library of Congress, you've got to make sure they're classified as a publisher. Also over there, if you look over here, the Getty um, Art and Architecture Thesaurus, it knows the format. We actually have entered in the regular expression of what the format of an AAT identifier is. So if you enter it wrong, it will alarm you there and say, by the way, you typed in something wrong. We know it should be 300 and then six digits afterwards. So this is a really cool tool. It gives bumper guards for editors of Wikidata. And why a lot of folks actually prefer editing Wikidata in many ways than to Wikipedia. All right, so this is where the fun happens. Once you get the information into Wikidata, how do you get it back out in interesting ways? So querying. Um, this is the Wikidata query interface. If you go to query.wikidata.org, you'll get what looks like a scary empty box, and you're saying, what should I put in here? Well, the great thing is it's a huge list of examples, and almost no one types in a Sparkle query from scratch. You almost always take an existing one and customize it for your purposes. So here is an example of the blank box, but you will quickly go and try an example. And then one that almost everyone uses first is cats. That is our example number one in Wikidata. Um, and it's really quite simple. So if I go here, and I'll get you to this in a second, but if I go here to query, query.wikidata.org, there's my big, scary, empty box there. But you go to examples, and you'll go to any number of queries that are prepackaged. So the easiest one to try is cats. And if I hit this play button here, it'll just run that query and show me all the cats that are in Wikidata. So again, these are instances of cats, not subclasses or species of cats. These are famous named cats in history. So like Sox, the White House cat of the Clintons, or cats that have been on television, or famous uh, cats that have a name. So you can see 132 different results come out here from this Wikidata query. And you don't even have to type in anything. So a lot of prepackaged queries. And if you just put your mouse on top of it, it'll show you exactly what is being queried, right? So this is an instance of, if I put my pointer on top of this one, it says that is known as a house cat, right there. Okay, so not that hard. You just basically change what you need to there. If you are interested in something more visual, you can actually pull this open, and this is the query helper that translates all that gobbledygook on the right into something that's more human readable on the left. Right, so this has been a real godsend for folks who have been trying to learn this RDF Sparkle stuff that's been around for years, but until a real practical use like Wikidata has come around, um, no one's been able to really decipher this stuff. But now you actually have a great playground with the bulk of Wikipedia content in Wikidata that you can play with. So what's some examples that we can do? What are some examples we can do? Well, let's try it yourself. So let's go to 
query.wikidata.org and try your first query in Wikidata. Okay, so go to your web browser, type in query.wikidata.org, and you should see something like what we saw before. Okay, so you'll see kind of a mobile version of that. Okay, but what I want you to do is click on this folder right there, and you should get a list of examples that pop up. And I want you to choose cats. And you should see the box populate with a query. Does everyone see that on their mobile phone? Right, so you should see something that looks like that on your mobile phone. You're gonna go ahead and click on the folder to open up the pre-existing query, choose cats, and then you can go ahead and choose the play button to run it. And then if you scroll down, you should see these cats pop up there. 132 results according to this search. I hope you all get 132 as well, unless someone is changing the cats underneath us right now. But you should see this result here like that. Okay, so these are pretty cool. Now, what I can do is also show the description of these. Now, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you here. I can say, I'm gonna show the item description, hit play, now you'll see that you get more information on these folks, right? So a member of a Japanese musical group, you will see uh, 10 Downing Street cats, so some famous political cats there. So this is just how you can customize this. Now, what I want you to do is let's change this slightly so that we are gonna change this to horses instead of cats. So if you go into the field here there that says one, four, six, you can change that to 726. So let's go back to our cats example here. I'm gonna go back here and hit run. There's my cats. Now what I'm gonna do is where it says Q146 there, I'm going to change that to, what is horses? 726. So 726. And you can see on my screen it says horse. You probably won't see it on your screen. But just change that one, Four six into seven twenty six, and you hit the play button. You will see three thousand two hundred three horses now show up. Wow! So a lot more famous horses than cats in Wikidata. Does that make sense? Do you think why are there more horses than cats? Racing. Racing. Yes. So you know, famous horses, triple crown winners. So there's more named horses that are famous than named cats that are famous out there. Yeah, we should raise cats so that we have a lot more famous cats out there. <laughs> so this is a great example of how we just take an existing query and we customize it for our uses here. Right? So you can say, let me see all instances of sharks, dolphins, anything that you want here. So that's a very simple Wikidata query. And you just run your first Wikidata query. Not that hard, right? And there's great examples up there. Some of my more fa uh, favorite ones are, if you scroll down here, you can see Mayor. Largest cities with a female mayor. That's pretty cool. Like, how could you find that out on Wikipedia other than inspecting every article? So this looks really complicated, I know, but don't worry, someone's figured it out for you already. So I'm gonna hit the play button here. And it's gonna go through and say, let me find out all the cities with women mayors, grab the population of those, mayor, of those cities, sort them, and what's it found? It is found Tokyo, Hong Kong, Baghdad, Baghdad, wow, didn't know that. Um, these are all the cities the top 10 cities in terms of population that have had a female mayor. And that is a really cool thing that you can do with Wikidata once you have that information in there. Any questions so far? Okay, so that's Wikidata query. Um, it's not as complicated as it looks, but examples really help. Um, advanced search in Wikidata. So this is an example that I like to show folks um, that we did with the Library of Congress. So we were doing an exercise with them with the researchers on Congress and we said, well, Let's list all the members of Congress that have ever served and find out where they went to school, where they went to higher ed, college, universities. And you can do a very simple search and just grab a list, but that's no fun. Let's do some more things. Not only do we want to see that they're human beings and they're a member of Congress because they have a Congress bio ID, right? So we say, show me instances of humans, make sure they have a bio ID. Then I want you to grab the school, and this could be multiple statements, they might have gone to University of Denver undergrad and then Harvard Law School for, for law school. Grab multiple statements like this. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to count how many schools, or how many times someone went to Harvard, or Yale, or Princeton, or any of these places, and then we're going to order them from highest to lowest, and then we're going to sort them, or limit them to the 15 top results. So this is going to give us a histogram of which universities have been the most influential in terms of educating members of Congress. Does that make sense? Humans who are served in Congress, grab their school, sort them, do a histogram. And what we found was kind of neat. So what we saw was, okay, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, yeah, they're this, but then you go down the list, Michigan, well, that was kind of interesting. Didn't realize Michigan was up there. Um, Dartmouth, Pennsylvania. And then we found a way to plot them on the map. So of course, East Coast bias because, you know, the 13 colonies were on the East Coast. But then something really funny popped up. We said, Union College? How many people here have heard of Union College before? Ah, a handful of you, perhaps. I would never heard of Union College before we did this experiment. Um, so we said, well, Union College, that's interesting, Schenectady, right? Or is it Schenectady in New York? Somewhere in New York. And we said, wow, did you know that in 1800, the big four universities in the US were Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and Union College? So they lost a lot of ground after a financial scandal and post-Civil War uh, financial issues. But what's really cool is that if you visualize this with Wikidata query, it really jumps out at you, right? So what we said was, let me see all the members of Congress who went to Union College. So we filled in exactly Union College in a query, and we got back this list of people and their birth dates. Okay, so when were they born? We did the same thing with some other schools, but take a look what happened. We said, these are the people who went to Union College with the date of birth plotted on a timeline. Wow. So that just jumps out at you visually saying that before 1865, people who were born, uh, in, before 1865 went to college, you know, Union College had a pretty good representation. But then after 1865, it really did not produce many members of Congress. And then if you compare it to something like Columbia University, a very prestigious Ivy League school, they actually did produce that many before 1865, but then after 1850, they really produced a lot of folks. So I'd like to see this as ways that Wikidata can, can transcend just replicating Wikipedia content. This provides you a way to explore and to discover stories within the data, and you don't even know, need to know how to program. You just need to be able to copy and paste these queries and do these things, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, so the impact of Wikidata is pretty amazing. Google had a competitive product to Wikidata, and in 2016, they shut their own project down and funded Wikidata instead. Because they said, Wikidata is doing it better, faster, and the community can maintain the data better than the employees of Google could ever do. So Wikidata is not the enemy, but in fact, the partner in what they want to do. Um, so again, as I said, Google search results use this Wikidata content for the knowledge graph. And we have multiple folks like schema.org endorsing Wikidata as a way to go forward. So some other interesting Wikidata tools out there, well, we have things like the Wikidata query, as we mentioned. You can actually graph out relationships in Wikidata using what we call Wikidata Graph Builder. We actually have um, tools that go out there and try to plot on a map all the things that we know about on Wikidata, but also ask you to contribute photos and additional geolocation information if it's missing in Wikidata. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do with Wikidata um, once you have um, these kinds of tools. So one tool I just show you before we finish off here is something that we probably would find most useful to museums. So this is an example query that tries to show you all the museums in a geographic location, right? So this is basically asking Wikidata, show me all museums or subclasses of museums. So if it's a military museum, if it's an art museum, if it's a <clears throat> any kind of museum, it will grab it in this query, and it's in Washington, D.C. Give me as much as information as you can. So optionally show me the coordinates, when it was founded, how many visitors it has per year. Give me an image if you can. And that's what these optional statements are there, saying, if it's there, give it back to me. We also have another way of doing this, saying, let me look at the center of D.C. and find all the museums 100 kilometers around that. So we actually have a way to do that with this service. It's called Around. So it'll find everything within a radius of a location. But the cool result of that is it can show all this to you in a table. So you can see here's the Wikidata item, the name of the museum, the geo coordinates, a picture if it's there, the inception date if we know it, and a visitor number if we happen to have that enter into Wikidata. And the cool thing is once you have all this information in a table, you can ask Wikidata to display it in one of many different formats. So let me show you what this looks like live. This is the live query. And this is what it brought back for 
Washington, D.C. Right? So it says, Washington, D.C., coordinate location, show me everything around it. And after I run it, instead of a table, I can actually tell wiki data, query, show it to me on a map. And it's going to take all those geo coordinates and plot it on a map for me, like that. Boom. I don't have to know the program or anything. I love showing this to journalists and folks saying, wait, I can do that without programming? Yeah, you can do that without programming. On the other hand, if you say, well, I know in this table I have all this visitor information for these big museums, is there a way to show that nicely? Yes, there is. In fact, if you go back up here, if you have a scalar or a number that's on the right-hand side there, you can actually say, let me see a bubble chart, and there are the visitor numbers shown in bubble chart format. I didn't make a new query. I just said, show me the data in a bubble chart format, and there it was. And I think these are pretty accurate. I think they are, right? Roughly, air and space and natural history are the biggies in terms of attendees. So this is pretty cool. And then if you want, you can say, let me see all the images that come back. And you can see all the museums that come back in an image grid like that. So these are the pictures of those museums. Some of these are house museums, some of these are battlefields. So this is just really cool in that you can empower the average person to just form the query and view the results in any of these kind of multimedia formats. Um, I think the last one is timelines. You can actually go and use the timeline format to see when these museums were created in DC. All right, so I would encourage you to go in there. We don't have the time now, but I was going to ask you to go in there and just change the city here in the query to whatever city you're interested in, Denver, Seattle, Portland, and you can just change this one city right there. Right now it says Washington, DC. So on your own, just go there and change Q61 to the Q number of your city that you're interested in, and it'll show you all the museums and what it knows about the museums in your area, which is pretty cool. All right, so that's the prepackaged query that you can try out on your own. It's linked to right here in the upper right-hand corner. All right, so as I said, Wikidata helps make these things much more accessible. This is what, if you read about RDF databases, you know, yeah. and so Wikidata came around, this is what they'd show you, and you're like, I have no idea what that means. What's a FOF? I, what are you doing? And then the right-hand side, this is what Wikidata Query can show you instead. It's much more friendly, much more usable as an interface. So now Wikidata Query is one of the more popular um, Sparkle endpoints that we see on the internet. If you are still a little bit scared of that Sparkle interface, you can actually go to a tool called VizQuery, and this is no code at all. You can actually just go in there and just enter in the P numbers, or just start typing in the English language label, it'll try to fill that in for you, and you can do simple queries without having to see any squiggly brackets or codes or Q, Q numbers if you don't want to. Okay? Yeah, so I encourage you to play with it. And the last thing that I'll show you um, that's relevant to museums, I think, is this cool tool that we have that helps connect Wikidata with your data sets. So we call these Wikidata games because it's a game interface. Instead of having to navigate all the complexity of Wikidata, this kind of interface just asks you to do one, of, one or two simple things, which is just tell me if this is a match or not a match. So the Wikidata games that we have here basically take the catalog that's been either uploaded by a museum or one that we've found on the website and we scrape and put it into our database, and we put it next to the Wikidata database, run an algorithm, and say, is this term in the Smithsonian American Art Museum the same as this term in Wikidata? And all you need to do is say yes, no, or I'm not sure. Right? So it's kind of like a Google crowdsource type of project where you just say, I don't need to know all these complexities. I just say, yes, no, I'm not sure. Right? So here's a great example of what we have now with Sam. So Smithsonian American Art Museum, they are right there. They uploaded their data set. And we now have lots and lots of data sets here. But I go in here and type in Sam like that. You can see some of the stats that we have, that we have 8,000 some records. 5,000 of them have been manually matched. We still have lots that are unmatched, so hopefully people volunteer to do this. But let me show you what has been automatically matched by the algorithm, but still needs human intervention. So what I've done here is brought up what the mix and match interface here thinks are matches, but it needs a human to finally push the button to verify or to not verify whether something's a match. Let me see why that didn't work. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you can see here that it's going to try to tell you what in green it is seeing in the American Art Museum database, and then the blue is what it finds in Wikidata. And so you can see here that it says, I think this person is the same as this person, but I'm not sure. So what you can do is what I would do is I'd go ahead and take a look at the Wikidata item, and I see here in Wikidata 
This person was born in 1945, and this person was born in 1945. I looked at the metadata before, and it's a very good match. So I can go in here and hit confirm right there. Okay, and that's it. And now it has made a match. And if I go ahead and look at that entry now in Wikidata, you can see now that this thing has just been added. That statement has been added to connect that to the Smithsonian American Art Museum database. I'm not sure why there's an exclamation point. Why is this? Ah, it should have a place of birth. Ah, oh, okay, so basically just saying that if this is a person with this stuff, we should actually try to fill in more information up here. So it's not a hard constraint. It's just saying that this is a human being with a date of death. He probably should have a date of birth. That makes sense, right? So other constraints and checks, make sure your date of death is not before your date of birth. Very simple math like that. So this mix and match is actually very popular with a bunch of folks in the Wikidata community. And you can see that you actually have a leaderboard here. So it's actually not just a game in name. You actually have people who are competitive to see who can match more records than other folks. Yes, it's a very geeky game, I admit. <laughs> but for museum professionals, you should appreciate that there are people interested in doing this with your data sets. Um, so you can see I'm not even in the top three. I only did 200 matches there. But we are doing matches against the Art and Architecture Thesaurus from Getty, against the uh, TGM from Library of Congress. We're doing all kinds of matches to try to get those terms um, synced up between external databases and the uh, Wikidata terms that we have here. So if you have some time, go ahead and take a look at that. It's really interesting. If you're interested in contributing your own data set to Mix and Match, contact myself or any of the folks who um, you find on Mix and Match, they are very open to uploading new data sets that are there. And then finally, I'll show you the project that we're working on with um, Smithsonian. I won't go through all of it, but it is basically a project to try to create an interface to add meaningful depicts metadata to the paintings that we have in Wikidata. Right now, there's about 350,000 paintings that are listed in Wikidata. Not all of them have pictures because some of those are not free images. But there's 350,000 some paintings in Wikidata that are seen as significant or um, notable. And we're trying to add meaningful depicts information for each of those things. So an example that we have right now that might be interesting to you folks who work for art museums, if you look at all the depicts statements in Wikidata about paintings, this is what they roughly break down to. There are more women than men, which I guess shouldn't surprise us, but that's pretty interesting. Lots of Virgin Marys, lots of child Jesus, lots of Jesus Christ. So definitely dominated by a lot of European, uh, you know, Christian art. Uh, but it's kind of interesting to see the breakdown of what we see right now with the uh, most depicted items in paintings in Wikidata. Then if you go and take a look at things like Smithsonian American Art Museum, it's quite different for different institutions. So for Sam, we see that sky, clouds, a lot of landscapes in American art here. Uh, but then if we look at something like Natural Portrait Gallery in the US, obviously George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Jackson, and these folks too. So it's really interesting that once you have this depiction metadata, you can do all kinds of interesting visualizations and um, some scholarly searches against this. So that's our dream, is to have meaningful depiction metadata for all paintings in Wikidata someday. Mm -hmm. But right now, working with Smithsonian for their collections to see what we can do with visualizing this and helping to get the public to help tag these images in a meaningful way. Um, so we have a few minutes free for some questions. I don't want to take up all the time. But if you have any questions, feel free to follow up. You should have on the piece of paper there ways to get in touch with me. Um, and these are kind of the actionable things that you can take a look at here, the Wikidata in one page uh, guide, which is roughly what I've talked about today. And if you're looking for um, sorry here, new actionable steps, one is try adding more items. Number two is try modifying the Sparkle queries we looked at today. Number three, try the mix and match just as a user. You need an account on Wikipedia to do this, but it's fairly simple to sign up for that. And you can try the mixing and matching to see what we're doing with museums right now. But if you have a data set or know of a museum that has a significant data set, I hear Cleveland Museum of Art is ready to make a big announcement soon. So we are talking maybe to them. We'll see. Um, then we'll see uh, if there's any kind of folks around you, meetups uh, of folks who are working um, already with you. So in the United States, we have significant glam wiki collaborations in DC, New York, Los Angeles um, as the major centers. But we're happy to work outside those areas as well. And then you can also install Wikibase. So a number of GLAM institutions have actually 
um, installed the software back in that runs Wikidata and used it as their own kind of collections management test harness, which is kind of cool. So you can actually use the same software that runs Wikidata to do these ultra fast searches um, just privately on your own back end if you want to try that. So that's a project called Wikibase. You can try downloading it there. We know of a number of LAM institutions that have played with it that have been quite happy with that. Okay, any questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, if I, let's say I uploaded my, um, my artist information into Mix and Match, mm -hmm. um, does my artist information then get published? Um, does your artist information get published? That's a good question. Well, what this does is it connects it. So the most important thing it does is add just one line or one statement into Wikidata that just points to your database. That's all it does. So it doesn't ingest any new labels or anything else um, unless someone manually did that. Right. right. Okay. So then we could compare the information that we have, including things like ethnicity. Yes, that's a great question. So one is, unfortunately, I skipped the slide really quickly that, you know, a lot of museums have artists and all these things, but have no ethnicity or gender. So when, you know, working with Sarah on like Women's History Month, it's like, ooh, we can't really quickly query who are women artists in our database, but Wikidata can. So if you say, show me all artists that are in Sam's database, but are women, Wikidata can answer that question. You can even say women, African-American ethnicity, who were born in Rochester, New York. Wikidata can bring that back. With, um, it's looking at a bunch of databases, so not Correct. Well, with that, you can just look at the identifiers and say, hey, this is an entry we know is in Sam's database or in another database. But you could do a federated search as well by pulling things in from the database. Okay. Yeah. Yes? Uh, Michiel Koster from the Van Gogh in Amsterdam. Uh, how is the findability of uh, Wikidata information in search engines related to the CEO efforts of every museum? Because more and more museums depend on conversion of their own website. Right. For, for now, Wikidata is pretty much invisible to Google. Um, that's kind of by design, because Wikidata is kind of raw, and it's not clear what you should be returning when you match something in Wikidata. So for now, from what we understand, Google's treating Wikidata as a special case that isn't generally indexed like any other site. And that kind of makes sense, because it's kind of a, an industrial back end to what you're used to seeing. Um, but Google's very much aware of what is going on in Wikidata. In fact, they're one of the initial funders of Wikidata. Um, but right now, you won't really find it in any search engine s searches. Is that what you're thinking about? Yeah. yeah. In fact, if you're in the Netherlands, there's a very active group of Wikidata folks in the Netherlands working with the museums there. I know, I know. But the, the question for museum is whether they should or should not put their collection uh, in Wikidata. Catalog in Wikidata. You mean the full, full catalog? Yeah. It depends. You know, if you think that the records are going to change quite a bit, it may not be a good idea to upload to Wikidata because Wikidata may not reflect those changes very quickly, right? Um, but sometimes people feel that it is worth uploading all that content out there, right? So it just depends on uh, what, whether you feel your, your content is stable or is prone to change as well. Yeah. Any other questions from folks? Yeah, we're running out of time, but we I'm happy to stay if you have any questions. The Wikidata in brief and the uh, contact page are the best ways to get in touch, and yeah, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay, I'm going to grab the uh, brief. Oh, yes. This was <laughs> like so coherent and, and useful and fun. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Do you think? Hi, thank you for your wonderful presentation. Sure. It was a good, uh, powerful story. <laughs> <laughs> but um, would it be interesting for a museum like the Van Gogh, for example, to mm -hmm. uh, put their uh, uh, Catholic data to a certain extent into the data yeah. and use it? To as your, as your, as a primary <laughs> collections database. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have some small plans who are interested in doing that. Right now. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we. Have, important enough, I think, to, to do it ourselves, but uh, mm -hmm. the question is, what is the effort, or what is the decision to do or not to do things Right, like that? right. Um, yeah, it, you look at what some folks have done. I, I didn't show you the sum of all things uh, page, but you might want to take a look at this, this project. Just called, um, yeah. 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 
Yep, they're on there. Uh, the the oh, okay. Right here. It's right there. Oh, okay. Wait, let's get that. So all the slides are there. Um, yeah, so this is the part of some of the paintings you can see. Um, you know, what different institutions have done to upload their content. So some of these might be familiar to you. Because I'm, uh, I'm trying to do some experiments with uh, uh, exhibition that they go on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, let me know. You have my contact. It'd be interesting to see what you do. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Sure. Hi. Thank you so much for this. Sure. Um, so I am very new to the whole idea of this idea, but working at Public Center Statistics right now, where we are building a unified platform for materials in our special collections archives in our community. Mm -hmm. um, it's the one unified front end from our sort of separate databases, and we're trying to figure out how to and this seems like it would be a really good option. Yeah. So what you were talking about though is people uploading their collection data to the internet. Right. Well, are people then using them like attaching the identifiers to their That's a good question. Kind of searching in their own platform? Right. Yeah. Is that not really That's awesome? encouraged. Although okay. not many institutions have done that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that Q number is a unique identifier okay. to Wikidata data that is meant to be stable. It yeah. is, is in, I wouldn't say immutable per se, but, but it should be very, very rare that that number should change. Okay, but you don't know of many other instances? Not that many. Okay. Yeah, but I would encourage you to try it because more should. Yeah, okay. Um, do you, what, what institutions are doing it? Just so. I don't know who's doing it now. That's a good question. Um, all I know of our experiments. Okay. So like, like folks like OCLC yeah. or even like the Met, they have done okay. that kind of linking okay. into Wikidata, but they're not public facing. Right. Because right. these are like the queries you were talking about. Is women artists. So I've been doing a lot of requirements gathering for this mm. platform, and over and over again, I hear like, I want to know all of the underrepresented, right. you know, artists or creators, and like, we can't do that right now. It's very know? hard, but now you have a way to do but it. Now we can do it. Yeah. But people want to do it in our own. Environment, right? So, um, well, hmm. not necessarily on. Do you have stable? Do you have an external facing database with stable identifiers? I guess that's my big question. Is like, do you have a unique identifier for? See, this is the this is part of our problem. Some of our so some of our library collection records do have that, um, and some of our but our our museum. I mean. We do the data, the only unique identifier is the accession right. uh, which is wonderful, and it's the same thing for our archives. So ultimately, we would like to give everything a stable right. identifier, but that's not the case. Right. right. I mean, you could do what is, uh, the other side had. You could download Wikibase. Now, it's a little bit technical, but you know, you yeah. download Wikibase, which is your own version of a RDF database, yeah. and you can fill it with whatever you want on your side. Mm -hmm. But it points out to Wikidata as well, and you can okay. query within your own environment. Yeah. So that's one possibility too. Okay. So we've seen more and more people try that as okay. an experiment to basically have their own RDF database. Yeah. Wait, I'm gonna mention that to our developers. Okay. And are you from Colesville? Uh, Colesville, Maryland, but not. New York. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I was gonna say I went to uh, Binghamton University, which uh, okay. is in Broome County. Right. Yeah. Right. Anyways, <laughs> not relevant. But okay. Well, thank good you luck, so much. and let me know if it uh, if it works out or you try something. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Hi, hey there. Hi. My name is Elena. Hi. Nice to meet you. I would like to introduce you for two reasons. One, I'm a very good friend of Zoe. Oh, good, good. Yeah, so I work with him at the Metropolitan Museum. I'm going to be here. We did it and I'm going to be And then I'm doing, yeah. I'm now at Pratt, so I'm doing some research about uh, right now about the usage of paintings on Wikipedia. Oh, perfect. So I downloaded all the data from Wikidata, then run a uh, Python query to uh, Wikimedia page views, then got all the data. Mm -hmm. and I found that. I mean, I'm. Oh, please, please do. Yes. Go ahead. Let me unplug it, then you can go. So you, you run your own bot. 
Things, but when you look at page views, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. Like paintings are used, for example, in art about black color, you know, that, right, or right. about I don't know teapot. Uh, so I'm finding very interesting. Like, um, right. like basically, it was like 80% usage in art-related articles versus like 20% in other things. Mm. And then, but you look at the views, it's the opposite. Interesting. So yeah, I'm like writing a, a research article about it, so I'll send it to you. So, yeah, that'd be because great. Because I think it would be good for the museum sector. Uh, to see like potential reach of new audiences, mm -hmm. you know, um, I don't know what the implications could be in terms of you know how you upload right. via Wikipedia, how you you know the Wikidata as well. Right. That. Yeah, that's really fascinating. Also, we saw a gap because of the image copyrights mm -hmm. in which are the paintings that are on Wikipedia. Right. So you can see like clearly in a in a you know a timeline like. Like a big valley. Yeah, yeah, at the end. <laughs> so that was very interesting, like how the like, copyright affects um, Absolutely. like documentation. Because I mean it's very interesting in seeing how paintings are used for to document and illustrate other type of, you know, themes, historic, geographic, uh, nature, any other topic that right. is not like an artist or an artwork or an art movement. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um it doesn't surprise me, but it's good to see the numbers behind it, mm -hmm. that, that we, we kind of surmised that was the case. Mm -hmm. But uh, you definitely should have, have you, do you know that there's a research, there's a monthly, is it monthly? Yeah, it's a monthly research um, yes, I meeting that, uh, at the Wikimedia uh, Foundation. Okay. So, um, so if you've got something to present there, you definitely should sign up for yeah. that. So who should I, is that, is it, is that Wikipedia? Uh, it's on Wikipedia, send me an email if you can't find it, but it's, um, there's a mailing list called Wiki Research L. So Wiki Research L. Yeah, I mean that email list. Okay. So you, sh seen the you should see some the solicitation the saying that they, they do a okay. kind of monthly research um, okay. uh, Google Hangout. And then okay. people will take like 10 minutes to present some of their research. Yeah, do that. Feedback, yeah. You know? Good. So that would be really cool to see. Yeah. yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, you're just in New York, right? I live in DC. Oh, DC. Yes. Okay. But you go to New York a lot. Uh, I do go to New York a lot. Okay. Yeah. At least <laughs> so seeing you with three in a few occasions. Yes, so. yes. At least every month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Is this, you come to MCN most years or is this your first time? No, I think here like five times. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. I'm a recurrent. <laughs> Good. Yeah. All right. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Irena from Colombia. Oh, great. My first yeah. time in MCN. Oh, great. And I wanted to talk. Uh, I, if, there's time to send you an email and explain a, a project that I have it's because we are making a wiki in, like, like an inter wikipedia with some content that we have from our library, oh, the nice. National Library of Colombia. Mm -hmm. and our mission is to create uh, content about Colombia, uh, like uh, like fonts for uh, fitting wiki wikipedia. Right. So we are using mini wiki mm -hmm. as as. Oh, nice. Yes, we are uh, thinking to if we can connect and automatize some uh, feeding to Wikipedia. Right. But I was thinking if Wikidata also could be integrated with this media wiki right. that we are using already. Right. So you think you, that this can be done? Or I, I can send you an email and show you what we're doing? Yeah. And you yeah. can tell me, okay, why, why are you doing what it's done? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but we were thinking, we have a lot of, of uh, I don't know the word, credibility. Right. As institution, so we're putting their information that is validated, but 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 the institution mm -hmm. to be shared and used by the people in Wikipedia. Nice. And also like, but I want to see how I can connect both universes. Right. And if Wikidata could be. Yeah, I think Wikidata could definitely have a role there, and I can maybe connect you. We have a group in Colombia, a users group of Wikipedia editors there. I don't know if you've ever seen them. Wikimedia Colombia. Yeah. See. You've, you've touched but they are not in Bogota, no, so I haven't, I haven't seen them. Right, right. But I would love to. <laughs> it's difficult because Colombia has many cities. So. Right, right. But do you think they, they already know everything about I don't Wikipedia know. It's a good question. I don't know how much they've worked with Wikidata. The I think in, in uh, Latin America they haven't done as much with Wikidata. For example, the, the well, I think the Brazilians are the ones who use it the most with uh, this project. With this project. Yeah. Yeah. And sadly, I, they have a lot of experience with it. My them. brother is doing his doctorate, his PhD there in the museum. Oh, really? He was like this story. Yeah. Oh, my God. And everybody was crying. Right. Right. Really, it was... Really heavy. Yeah. But it's, but it's good that 
Wikidata and Wikipedia are still being part of this. Well, it, we think yeah. that it's it's um, inspired some museums to be quicker to totally. release their stuff for open access because they're like, ooh, we better have a disaster plan. And so part of that disaster plan is <laughs> letting other folks copy stuff over <laughs> and do things with it. Right? So. Perfect. You're going to start? No, oh, no, no, no. The next section about, I wasn't able to make this list. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. Right. Um, well, are you actually with Wikimedia Foundation? Well, not the foundation, but we have a chapter in D.C., so I work out of D.C. Oh, with okay. the Wikipedia editors there. Okay. So, yeah. um, I'm part of the Write Statements uh, oh. working group. Great. And then I've been trying to follow the structure and data on comments. Oh, nice. Uh, so I'm trying to get better steeped in the kind of culture of how the work happens. Right. Um, so it's sort of interesting. Uh, well, you're, you're ahead of the curve, because I'm trying to keep up with structured data and comments, and I find it hard. It's a lot Yeah, of so the conversation's there. happening in different places, and like it right. seems like it's happening over here, and then it pops up over here. Right. And, like, <laughs> Well, that's what happens when you have a, a project that cross cuts like multimedia and data and yeah. Wikipedia. Like, so you're right, they just shift around. Um, but right, we're interested in watching how the right stuff sort of gets added in. Right, right. And you're with? I'm with the Cornell oh, Museum. Cornell. Of oh, I met your colleague, um, Scott. Scott, say. Sarah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yep. Oh, good. Um, but I'm also on the rightsstatements.org technical working group. Oh, great, so great. we're trying to watch like how that vocabulary can be integrated in Wikipedia. Nice. Like, right, what are the right properties? Where do I touch it? Right, right. Um, yeah, so. yeah, there was a property proposal in Wikidata for like rights, the, the rights status. And I don't think that went anywhere, but we should try to move that forward. Um, yeah, well, it gets tricky about yes. like what are they and like how are they different than uh, things that are licensed, that are actually licenses. Right. Um, it's expressed as the SCOS vocabulary, so it's really practical and things like that. So, yeah, we're watching um, and interested, also in trying to figure out, um, we responded to some of the structure and data and comments. So, so sorry, I didn't mean to... No, 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 I was over, I was going yeah, to yeah. just, I, I, maybe I can write you... Please do, yes. Some name to yeah, and I'll connect you with whoever I know doing things in that area, that'd be great. Okay, Good, Bye. good meeting you, thanks. Very interesting. All right. Bye. Yes. Um, yeah, so, uh, Scott, I was just uh, at your museum last year. Oh, um, okay. We are at Cuca Lake for a vacation. I said, oh, we nice. got to go to the Corning Museum of Glass. So. Oh, yeah. Well, if you come back, I you know, I'd always people always want to come for a vacation, so I feel bad about inviting them to then do professional things. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my idea of vacation is to do professional things with your museum. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, uh, let us know when you're coming back, because this is also part of like the roadmap that I'm trying to paint, is mm. how we open access our data. and. Um, right, we're behind the curve in a lot of ways, which right. is good. But then we think differently about how we approach it, and one of those approaches is doing a better job. Um, I've been trying to start pulling together how we are represented within the Wikimedia world, mm. including um, mostly we're represented by visitor photographs who come to the museum, take it, and then post it to the commons. Right, right. And not our own photography. Have you ever done a bulk donation of that? Or, uh, no, uh, but that's one of the things I'm looking We're trying to get ourselves in a place where we're ready to do that kind that's of thing. That's good. Um, we pushed up to the Google Cultural and to Art Store, mm -hmm. and I want to add the comments. That'd be great. Because we've already sort of had agreement internally mm -hmm. about the copyright and licensing. Great. Yeah, I, I, I last time I was in Corning, Media the glass was like, probably when I was like, not even a teenager, like 12 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I was shocked. Have you seen their Tiffany stuff? It's, it's amazing, mm -hmm. your, your Tiffany collection. I need an excuse to go have a non-vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, wow. But that's also, like, I knew a little bit about the museum because I was following Scott's work. Uh -huh. And like everybody I talked to now is all these people who are all like, oh, yeah, I was there when I was a kid. And blah, blah, blah. Right. And, uh, but we've changed a lot since then. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's really impressive. So yeah, if there's anything that, uh, that uh, we can do to help you, like do the bulk upload or the metadata for all that stuff. Let me know. You have my contact. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. I'm out of cards, unfortunately. But... This is my gigantic card. <laughs> <laughs> Just I like your card with a big QR, a bold <laughs> QR code. I'm like, it's finally time for QR yeah, codes to merge. It it's baked in. Um, it was so fun for me to watch, like, uh, pra practical sparkle. <laughs>